Um, let's talk a little bit about our keys to success. So what do you think, like when this series is over, we're going to say for either team, uh, was the difference. Uh, and then let's hear your prediction for the series. You said seven, let's hear for whom. Um, I picked Bruins in seven. I'm not, I'm not ready to, to jump off of that, of that just yet after one game. Um, especially a game that was at least score wise, very close. Um, but I do think that, you know, the Bruins have had the better, the overall better of the caps this year. There were, um, some moments that there was a particularly lopsided, uh, loss, but again, that was, you're missing all four of your best four defensemen. Yeah. Yeah, they Steve also, Camper, Steve Camper was your top D in that game. So right. there's that. Um, yeah. <laughs> they also lost only by a goal with three seconds left in a game where they basically just dressed the Providence Bruins. Um, and again, like don't put a ton of stock into that because I'm sure the Caps weren't trying super hard and a largely meaningless game. Um, but I just, I don't know. I, I think especially the way the two teams have been trending in the last two months, Bruins were the hottest, if not one of the top two or three hottest teams in the league post trade deadline. Um, and the Caps were fine. Um, their, their best hockey was be- uh, earlier in the season. So I think they're uh, they're going and the Bruins are trending in a better direction. I think there's a lot more uncertainty with the Caps goaltending situation. There was even prior to um, Vitek Vanacek, as as Kelly Rudy put it, not stretching enough <laughs> <laughs> prior prior to the game and pulling a muscle. Um, but I also think, despite the loss and despite you know, you could say that the Bruins didn't play their best because the Capitals played them very well. But I think that we've seen maybe not the Caps' best, but their best players were their best players. We haven't seen that from the Bruins yet in this series. And I think if we start to, the fact that the Bruins only lost by a goal in overtime, that moves the needle much further in the Bruins' favor. So I still think that it's going to be a very close series. I still think that the Bruins will come out on top, but neither uh, a win or a loss in this series would not shock me either way. Yeah. It's two very, very good hockey teams. Uh, To me, uh, number one that you mentioned key to success is the goaltending. Tuka Rask, you know, whether it's uh, Vitek Vanacek, Ilya Samsonov or Craig Anderson should be able to outduel them. You would think, Uh, especially if it's Anderson who has had such limited play, unless Anderson can somehow channel 2016 17 out of a senator's craig anderson you'd think that that gives them a market advantage on that um so i think if rask can play to his ability uh, i think that gives the bruins a massive uh edge in this series so his his play will be will be huge um the other thing is special teams and i'll just sort of share uh you mentioned how good the caps penalty kill was this year it was fifth in the league uh the bruins were however second in the league pretty good Uh, The Capitals power play after sort of a middling year last year was third in the league this year. The Bruins who had a hot start, a terrible middle and came back on strong at the end of the season were 10th. So you've got two teams who are in the top, top uh, third of the league, uh, top, top 10% of the league, sorry, 20% of the league in power play and penalty kill percentage. And I think whichever team can get those going, uh, will also give themselves a decisive advantage, especially if the five on five play is going to continue to be as tight checking as it was. It's, if it's not going to be very open games, you're going to absolutely have to capitalize uh, on the special teams, which is how the Bruins have liked to play for the last few years. So I think that actually can play to their advantage uh, if they can get those, those going. Uh, and I'll say it like you, I think this is going the distance. I think it's going seven. I do think that the, uh, that Rask will be the X factor uh, and the Bruins will win in seven. Um, a couple things before we, we move move on, uh, just that that popped up. Uh, one, do you th- <laughs> did you notice? I think that the ice was real bad in that game. Do you see how many players just fell all over uh, the place? I, did, I, I didn't catch that, but I'll have to I'll have to try to pay attention next game. Yeah, like in particular, like the caps around the goal line, the offensive zone. But then it was happening to the Bruins too, just not as much, but there's just guys falling down all over the place. And it just, I had, had to assume that it was just really shitty ice at, at the arena. Um, Very possible. It's getting second, to be that humid time of year in DC. 
Yeah. Second, um, what'd you think of the shenanigans with the net? Oh, I, I didn't think it was shenanigans. You know, if you're the goalie and you get stuck in there and it's up like that, your, your default that you've been taught since you're nine is just knock it off. Like just, that's it. I, doesn't I didn't make it legal. That, no, it was already <laughs> off though. I I'm part of the goal. Yeah, but also and Chara and pushed spent. it off. Oh, Chara pushed him into it, but that's not no, Anderson's Chara, fault. Chara got his hand on the post and he oh. shoved it out his way by. You know, I missed that part actually. Then, yeah, I thought that Anderson. It's had one of those things that, it. like, I I'm honestly not that upset about it, but it was like, like a little bit typical too, because the Bruins like had a good scoring opportunity while it was happening and yeah. shot it into the net that was falling off. And granted, part of the reason they were able to was because nobody Anderson was trying was, at that point. Yeah, but it was it was just like I don't know. I wouldn't. I honestly would have been shocked if they called it anything. You can't, you can't but I also it. like, but like, like, uh, like Brian Boucher said, some a veteran savvy move by, by Anderson, which brings me to my next point. Did you see all the stuff on Twitter from Bill Burr? No, he was he was just like on a on a tear of like saying like a hockey phrase equals and what it actually means, and one of them was like a veteran savvy move equals he's really good at cheating. Um, <laughs> And there was another one that was like, he plays with an edge equals he's a complete piece of shit, but he plays for my team. <laughs> um, and there's, there's just a whole bunch of those. Um, oh, you have to, you have to send me those. Uh, yeah. Definitely. And, then the, and the last thing was, did you see the, uh, you tend to skip the intermissions, but did you see the, uh, when uh, Catherine Tappan had her like little preview of her interview with, with pasta? I did not. Uh, she asked what a spirit animal was and you should look this up too. Cause he was <laughs> okay. like, he was like, uh, I forget the beginning, but he was like, I, I, I would be an elephant, but at the same time, <laughs> butterfly. <laughs> oh, I have some, I have some research to do. Normally I skip the intermissions because I watch the games later. And yeah. also cause like Andrew Raycroft and Billy Jaffe annoy me cause they just, they, uh, See, they, you must be not... watching on actual Nesson, but this was also like, this one was NBC, but like for some no, reason, I know the NBC, when I watch yeah. on game center, every game except for the Bruins, like if I watch any other teams broadcast, I get the intermission reports, but the Bruins, I don't, I do not get the Nesson ones. It just shows me the same loop of the like guys, like, the ice crew painting the ice yeah. <laughs> for the entirety of the intermission. So I actually, I haven't heard like Ray, Ray Croft or Jaffe or Dale Arnold all season. Yeah. They're, they're not bad, but they like, they pander a lot, you know, and it's I've just never not been a I, big Dale Arnold guy. Yeah. And it's just not how I, I like to watch my, hockey. I like, I feel like I used to like Billy Jaffe and so I, until I started paying more attention to what he was actually saying. Yeah. They, they, they're they're good for TV. Let's put it that way. It's not a, it's not an insult or a criticism, and anyone who likes them should like them. They they know what they're talking about, but they, you know they, they they deliver snippets for TV, and that's not how Billy I like Billy Jaffe, hockey. according to Hockey DB, DB played a single Division One college hockey game for Michigan. Uh, oh, there you go. I'm actually uh, I I will spend some time with Billy Jaffe next next summer at a sporting event. So I'll I, I hope he. <laughs> I'm doubting he's listening to this, but uh, I'll, I'll buy him a beer at the bar if he is uh, next summer. So, <laughs>